I thought we'd do her dress in violets. So this is a great combo. V15, V12, and V000 are your three main colors. So V15 is your darkest, V12 is your mid-tone, and V000 is your lightest. However, I like to go back in and add a deeper shadow when I'm all done, especially in clothing. So V09 works really well for that darkest color. Um, if you look at your color charts, you would see that there's a V17. It really doesn't work with this combo. It has a lot of blue in it, so um, it will not blend over the V15. If you add it, it kind of gets a funny look to it, so never use V17 with V15. V09 is always the best alternative for that. So that's if you're using Copics. If you're using something else, then the colors would be totally different. But go ahead and pick out three that you love best. And then if you like that extra shadowing like I do, which I think makes the image pop a little bit more, pick out one darker color. That's something, you know, if you're starting out, stick with the three. As you get more comfortable with your blending and coloring, you can add the fourth um, as your darkest. You'll hear if you you've ever taken any of my classes or listened to some of my other videos is keep your markers uncapped. Every time you cap them and uncap them, that's a few seconds of your time when your ink is drying. So if you're coloring something under 10 minutes, which most of your coloring for one part of an image should take less than 10 minutes. If it's taking more than that, then we need to have a little chat. Um, but you can keep them open for up to 10 minutes and not have to worry about them drying out. I've taught lots of classes and told people to do this and they've been using my markers so I would never say to do that if I didn't think it was possible. It's easier to pick up an uncapped marker than it is to cap it, uncap it each time. If you're a little OCD, and I know some people are, and that makes you nervous, on your desk you could set it in the cap like that if that makes you feel better. But trust me, it may, will make blending so much faster for you when you don't have to worry about uncapping each marker every time. Let's talk a little bit about folds. So on folds, let me pull out my other girl here. The easiest thing to remember is the top of the fold is the mountain, the bottom of the fold is a valley. The top of the mountain is light, as it goes down into the valley it's dark. So you got light, dark, light, dark. And you're kinda gonna rotate that each time and that will give you the curve look that you want. That's uh, what I call a mountain and valley fold. There's lots of other different types of folds and folds that come in different ways but this is pretty straightforward which I like. It's great for beginners that are learning to use, um, just color the folds. So the valley of your fold is always going to be the darkest. The top of your mountain which is the top of your fold is always going to be the very lightest. The darker your valley is to the light of your mountain that's going to create that contrast so you need to have very strong contrast between your dark and light if you don't you're gonna lose the fold if you get carried away with your blending and you lose that light to dark contrast you're really gonna have to try and put that back in a couple ways you can do that you can keep darkening your fold area your valley area or you could take your color splendor and try to lighten the top of the mountain, top of the fold area. So always remember with folds, very dark to very light is the contrast you want to really make it pop. And I kept my light colors as the majority of the fold. Definitely if you wanted her dress to be a darker violet, you would add a little bit more color into the light areas than I did. I wanted to keep it more of a pale lilac instead of a dark violet. So even with the same combo, you can go very dark or you could go very light. It's personal preference. When you sit down, you get to be the fashion designer and artist. So that's up to you. So that this video doesn't drag on and on, I'm just going to show you where I would shadow the top. And then off camera, I'm going to blend that out for you because laying down the shadow is the most important part. Again, we have her chest area, so we want that to stay pretty light. It's just kind of drawn in here for us. So I always lay down my dark first. Again, if you want to lay down that primer light coat of your lightest color, you can do that. Something you can do or you don't have to do. It's totally up to you. And I want a little shadow on the other side as well, but not as much. So I would bring that out like that and then use my mid-tone and just a very little bit pull it out like that and then I would finish blending with my lightest color. 
and I'm gonna have to do that a few times so I'll do that off camera but this is kind of where you want to lay your shadows down all right let's jump into the fun part the folds um, I blended this out a little bit more I'm gonna jump down here and we're gonna pick out the valleys and mountains this could change on your dress if you want to do it a different way I don't believe that there's any wrong or right so um, you just as long as you have a valley next to a mountain each time so a dark next to a light dark light that's how you kind of need to alternate it it doesn't matter to me how you pick out your folds for me this looks like a fold and then we have this one along the side that I'm going to pull down and then we have this larger one here We've got these tricky flowers in there so you gotta kinda watch out for those and pull it down remember not to add too much dark at first we can keep going in and adding more if you add too much at the beginning it's harder to take it away than it is to add it so always start with a little bit and then keep coming in and adding so that's kind of where I'm going to have my valleys where I've picked out then I'm going to come in with my next color which was V12 if you're using the same ones and I'm just going to start blending out just a little bit alongside just pulling it down a little bit and then you pick up your lightest color and you're going to blend again. Remember, don't bring that light into the dark. You're going to have muddy color and weird lines. So we kind of laid that down. Now I want to add a little bit of shadow up here at the top of the waist of her skirt because I know it would kind of wrinkle a little here with these folds so I'm bringing in just a little bit of shadow like that pulling some lines down again this is not something you have to do it's just a little extra I'm using my next color I'm going to pull them down some more and then blending out and now because I like to pack as much as I can into a video and as much info as I can. If you're just starting out, I'm going to blow your mind here and show you a little trick. This V000 is very light compared to the V12. So they do work well together, but sometimes you have to make a mid-tone color. There is no mid-tone color that Copic makes for these two. So what we can do is make it ourselves. We take the tip of the V00 to the tip of the V12 and we brush color off so that we get some on our marker like that doesn't hurt the marker you can scribble it right off but this way I'm gonna make that mid-tone color between the two to blend out just like that and you have to keep doing it each time so just creates a little bit deeper color so that I can blend those lines out A little bit easier. It doesn't mean you have to do this. If you want to sit here and add lots of layers of V00, you can. This is just a little bit faster route and allows you to use less ink. makes your blending a lot faster and you can do this with any of your colors always take your lightest and grab the color from the darker color not the other way around it doesn't work that way it has to be light to dark so I like the way that looks it's pretty well blended but to me there's not enough contrast and that's where that V09 is going to come in this is pretty dark so off here I'll show you how dark that is. So you want to use just a little bit. Please don't go overboard with your darkest. Remember what I said, we can add more later. So I'm just going to use the tip. Instead of using the side, I'm using the tip to add a little bit more color. And I'm going to come in around the waist. I'm just adding 
the tiniest bit to deepen those shadows. Those darn flowers make it a little tricky. Not that I don't love the flowers, just makes it a little bit harder on you when you're blending something like this. I've added a little bit of that, so I'm going back to the V15 and I'm just softening out what I just put down just so it doesn't look so harsh. Always blend out your colors. Yes, it's going to add more time to your coloring, but you don't want any weird lines happening in your coloring and it should always look well blended and soft. And same thing up at the waist or the side of her dress here. I would go in and add that same shadowing to match what I've done down on the bottom part of her skirt. And you can see by adding that little bit of color how much we've made those folds pop. And you can keep going in and doing that each time. It just depends on how dark you want your dress to be and how much contrast you want. Some people like softer contrast. Some people like more, so they would go darker than what I've done. And that's okay. Remember, you're, you're the fashion stylist today, so... Don't feel that you have to follow what I've done exactly. I'm just giving you some tips on how to make it pop a little bit more. And always go in, especially with your lightest, you can always keep adding a little bit more color and blending. And that's pretty much it. That's how I would do her dress and her skin. So hopefully you've picked up a few tips today. If you're new to Copics or of the, any of the other alcohol markers, I wish you the best of luck. They are very fun to use. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. I hope you picked up some tips today, maybe something new that you didn't know before. Have fun while you're coloring, especially with these cute Darling Diva collection from your next stamp. Um, remember to breathe while you're coloring, and it's all about having fun um, and making beautiful art. So enjoy, and the next video we'll do will be on hair.